Hello everyone and welcome for another video of Love and War Games. In this video, we are going to take a look at what has been announced as the releases for Dystopian Wars for the month of April. And as you can see uh, up there, there are three very interesting boxes, especially two of them. I'm a little sorry that this comes a little bit late. I had some personal familial issues that I had to take care of and I usually try to cover this the first day that it's announced and we are two weeks late. But really, there was no other way. I am a little bit sorry. So, what do we get in this box? We're going to get the Ergun Battle Fleet set for the Chinese that you can see uh, right here. This is a quite interesting box. We'll see something very interesting. It's the same flagship that we've seen before. And this is actually quite crazy. The first time we see the same flagship in resin twice, but with some new plastic sprues. So, quite interesting mix. Then we have the Hodinka Battle Fleet set for the Russians of the Commonwealth. Again, uh, this is more classic, same sprues that we know and a new resin kit. And finally, we have the Union Aerial Squadrons. Uh, we've been expecting them for a while. Uh, if you do need more of the flying Zeppelins of the Americans, it's a good source, but probably, probably you will want the other boxes that exist already for some reasons that we will explain in a little bit. As always, uh, if you enjoy this type of content, give us a thumbs up. It really helps. And uh, also leave us a comment. And as always, uh, we have a little contest ongoing. We're going to try to make it permanent thing. Uh, you can win either a massive Union fleet. And as you can see, if you want some uh, airships, it's a good way to have your surface all covered. And you can also win the Covenant uh, force that we put into play. And they've received a big boost with their latest orbit. They are now as good as they are supposed to be and yeah they're very fun to play so give us a comment and you will gain a ticket so let's start with what is first in the blog and that is the Hodinka Battlefleet set this is what we've been all waiting for for a while uh, for the Russians when we've seen the mass twos uh, aerials and you have three variants and all three of them are very interesting indeed I was a little bit hoping for a mass one, but they were not in the orbit for the Russians. We're probably going to have to wait for the Polish for this. Still, it's uh, going to be a great. Um, I cannot share with you yet the data sheet, but do know that they have been in beta for a while for the war hosts. Sometimes it doesn't happen, in, but for those, it was the case, which means that when they will come out uh, of the box, unlike the American flagships, uh, Aerials that had to wait for a few updates before they got good, uh, those guys are going to be good and fun and have their own specific gameplay out of the box. because They've really got uh, wave after wave of polish in the Warhost orbit uh, for the beta, and they're going to be good from the beginning. So expect them to be very fun to play uh, from the beginning. And we will start, of course, like you, you, we will make, of course, a dedicated video when we receive them, like what we usually do unboxing plus Statica. But short, uh, you have two aerial uh, sprues. So we know them already. So we're going to have two overcrafts, which are getting better and better. You will see the new Commonwealth orbit. Uh, two aerial ships and four escorts. Uh, very cute little uh, Commonwealth escorts. The big news is the flagships that is brand new. You have three variants. The basic one, the Hodinka, is basically a flying Borodino. As you can see, it has three heavy gun batteries, which can be upgraded with rail guns if you want to make a massive aerial snipers. It does have torpedoes in the front, as a, like heavy torpedoes, like a Borodino, as you can see. It does not have the cryogenerator uh, of the surface Borodino, but it's, it's okay. It needs to have a little bit weakness as well. Um, it does have ablativa armor. Great. Uh, I cannot tell you too much about the rules um, because there are some things you can guess, some things that you cannot. You can see that it's basically a flying Tunguska, so you can expect things from this. And especially, you can start to see a gameplay. If you look at the special rules of the Tunguska and you think it's a flying Tunguska, there is something about mobility that if you start to have a full fleet with this uh, for, uh, capacity, you can start to see some uh, nice mobility, shooting, retreating combo that with a full Hodinka plus Tunguska is going to be very fun. We're going to talk more about this combo when the data sheet has been announced because we're not um, protected from the fact that maybe the rules will change. 
but if it does happen, there's going to be two main gameplay to play this guy as a extreme range railgun sniper that will snipe all over the table and it's going to be very fun. You have torpedoes as well, so that's going to be really, really fun. Or as a close combat attacking monster that can basically teleport around with its uh, escorting Tunguskas and that's going to be very fun as well. Just jumping left and right and shooting every turn and then pulling back, that's going to be very fun as well. So overall, it's probably my favorite variant because I like the appearance of it and uh, it's relatively resilient. Uh, it's going to have some ways to go to Armor 8, which is great for an aerial unit. Citadel is a little bit lower, but between Ablative Armor and maybe you want to put, I don't know, a shield in the back or maybe a magnetic, that's going to be a tough ship to deal with. Then you have the Konostoga, uh, Heavy Sky Cannon. <laughs> well, there is no spoiler to make, like this is basically a flying Richter. So you have an Apocalypse Cannon that is flying, that is already huge. Of course, it's less resilient, of course, uh, than a Richter. Of course, you're going to be visible from everyone, but you also you will be able to shoot on everyone from the skies. And uh, like it has less weapons because the Richter had some uh, secondary turrets, some broadsides, etc. Like this guy is just basically a flying sky can, as the name suggests. There are two things that I will say about this guy, uh, because probably will you will uh, want to build it as soon as you receive it. First of all, try to magnetize, as always, and there is one thing I want to say, uh, it's a little bit spoiler, but I think it's important that you have the information, is that the Konostoga is not going to be a flagship. So be careful if you uh, want to start your Commonwealth with this. Despite being a massive flagship, it is not um, a flagship. So, uh, like in the sense that it cannot lead a fleet. So be careful with that. And uh, still, it looks amazing. It's Having a flying Apocalypse Cannon is great. And there is a little trick, a little surprise that I will maybe not spoil there because I don't want to have trouble. Um, I'm not sure if Speed Demon Painting uh, spoiled it already. But yeah, it, it is not just basically a Richter because it has a little trick with it. That means that uh, you may be able, may be able to... Okay, I will just say it outright. Maybe it's not limited to having one ship per unit. Maybe it's a little bit more and maybe then you can make crazy combos and crazy units. So if you are making your pre-orders and you love this idea, maybe buy two boxes because, yeah, you're going to have fun then. And finally, the Krasnaya class heavy sky drill. Uh, Krasnaya means red and it's probably you're going to paint the seas red with this thing because just look at the size of it. I, if there were a terrifying rule in Dystopian Wars, this thing should have it because when you see this charging you, you'd, you probably are a little bit scared. Uh, it's, as you can see, it's basically a flying uh, Irkutsk, I think it was the, um, the one with the drill, or the Saransk, no Irkutsk, except you have heavy gun batteries, so you can put on this little guy as well something like a shield generator. It has basically all the rules of the Irkutsk, um, and you can put a Fury generator if you want to board as well. And you can see from right there that it also has all the furnace weapons that you would want slash need. It has Cloud Dive again as well, basically flying Irkutsk. And if you want to make a themed aerial list, with the Krasnaya as a flagship and some Irkutsk and you just throw them with Cloud Dive first one and being like, uh, deal with them, that's a good way. If you play on a map on a table with um, aerial islands or aerial cover in general, it's good to put them in Cloud Dive because you can hide them behind. Otherwise, uh, do consider keeping them in reserve because yeah, you they're not as tough as you would like them to be and you really want to make the connection uh, of the ramming attack with those guys because it's their main way of attack. Then you get, okay, indeed it was Irkutsk, so we know this guy. It's the only ha uh, little guy that has this uh, little uh, relay to make a little um, bubble aura of uh, removing uh, obscurity, if I'm not mistaken. So Irkutsk, still very good. If you want to put it with a Krasnaya, it's great. You have, of course, the Tunguskas. Uh, love, I absolutely adore this little uh, unit. It looks so good. Probably one of the, my favorite aerial unit in the entire game. Um, just love that it's a flying, like diesel punk beast of metal. Alongside one or two uh, Hodinkas is gonna look great. Tunguskas can be in uh, units of up to four ships. So if you buy twice the box, or you already had some aerial unit from the starters from the Moskva battle fleet, etc., etc., maybe uh, you want at some point to be able to put a squadron of four Tunguskas. Because if you put full railgun, it's gonna be one huge threat that is just gonna rain death from afar. And then 
My favorite in terms of gameplay, because damn this thing is strong, is the Saransk. It's very good at doing two things, staying in the back and being a very offensive oriented ship, because it has lots of Katyusha uh, and rockets with a uh, rocket barrage, so it's great at, especially if you start to put two or three of them together, it's great at just obliterating a target. It also has heavy escort, so again, if you put three of them together, it's quite well. It has flag barrage seven, again, very good for staying in the back and protecting your ships. And finally, if your enemy comes with some, uh, I don't know, some reserves especially, or some robots or whatever, it also has a fair uh, fray value with uh, the, I forgot the name, but the berserkers. And this means that you have a good counter punch. So you shoot in the back, you protect your ships, and when the enemy comes too close, you can bore them. So this unit is, um, I will not say under cost, but it's very point efficient. It would not be undeserved to see a point raise on this little guy. And uh, for sure, right now, it's one of the most competitive aerial unit in the Commonwealth. It, because it does so much. It's such a tactical Swiss knife, Swiss knife that, yeah, you are never wrong to put a couple Saransk in your fleet. As always, like um, for the Commonwealth, they do like to have this horde effect on the battlefield. So if you want um, to buy two of these boxes, you can really want, like you can really do with your eyes closed because they can be really great. Then you have all the uh, overcrafts. I'm not gonna go too much in details. Just know that they are being a little bit reworked. Uh, some of them are gaining some good boosts. Like for example, the Yak gaining some Berserkers because uh, it has some boarding troops. So of course it has Berserkers. We, we're really working with the Warhost and the team at War Cradle, which are very receptive, thanks to them again, to make sure that the overcrafts, uh, you pay the right price, like they're not too fragile. And they do have their own utility next to the Ekranoplans of the Commonwealth, which are also massed one, expensive, uh, with a lot of hull points, etc. So we're really trying, to, and they're fast, keeping like, we're really trying to make sure that there is a place for all the units and uh, making sure that they are uh, points appropriate. Maybe they're gonna be some of them more expensive, some of them cheaper, but the idea is that they all, uh, each of them have their own identity and you can really have fun with that. Do note that it does not say that you can make a Zuber um, for some reason here. It did require a little bit of conversion, but to be fair, the Zuber just need a little tube here, if you see my mouse uh, here to um, like on the Citadel, to uh, say that it has some additional rocket batteries. But really, you can proxy a Zuber uh, with a Yak without any issue, and except if you really zoom in and you take it, the miniature in your hands, you will not see the difference. And then some escorts, because we all love escorts. I will just say one thing about escorts. We try in our narrative campaign a new system where, uh, don't do this in a tournament, but basically all the escorts are free. So yes, it helps a bit more Sultan, but anyway, they need help anyway. And it makes the table so much better. Everybody does this now in our gaming group because they're they're good escorts, but they don't change the game. They're a little bit like you feel bad buying escorts because it's like points. And, oh my god, maybe I could have bought an extra turret or stuff. And they don't change much, and it has so much uh, like uh, enjoyment to have them on the table because you really have this messy fleet feeling. It doesn't make the game any slower at all because you don't play them. They're just token. They just look good on the table, and so yeah. Do try with your friend at least once uh, to have all the escorts free. So all the flagship are going to have max escorts, etc., etc. And uh, let us know in the comments if you do enjoy the game more like this. Then the second big release of this month is going to be the Empire uh, Ergun Battlefleet set. And this is really interesting because this ship, this is the Ergun, the transport one. We've seen it already with the uh, Heilong Battlefleet set that we've unboxed on the channel a while ago, it was. It was with some uh, Chinese frontline, and again, we're gonna go in detail of all the units and what they do when we receive the, um, the box. We're gonna make, as we do now, unboxing and Tactica. If the Orbat takes a little bit of time to be released, maybe it's gonna take a while for us to deliver the video as well. So uh, I cannot spoil you anything because we don't have any information about what any of this does. We can make some speculation. I think uh, Speed Demon Painting did quite some speculation of, about what everything does and maybe the statistics and stuff. I uh, will just make a little quick note about what does what. I think it's very interesting to have the same flagship with some different sprues. It's, um, I'm not sure it's a great commercial decision because it makes more boxes and more boxes. And but still it's great. If you are a new Chinese player, you can buy one Heilong Battlefleet and one 
Irgun Battle Fleet and the, you can make the two flagships magnetize them, it's great. And of course, it's going to be the first place where you can get the Chinese support sprues. So what do you get in that? Well, let's make a quick look. We talked about this already, the Ergun and the Elong. This guy, the Ergun, is basically basically a boarding ship. It is a landing vessel with mass 4. That's really, really great. It has a lot of weapons. It has an integrated magma caster generator. Great ship, great border. Landing vessel is good. I just absolutely love it. But what I love even more, you've seen it a couple times on the on the channel, is the Heilong uh, Strike Battleship with two uh, flamethrowers in the front. Uh, in reserve, this thing is insane. You can attach a junk with another flamethrower. You can replace the gun batteries and the rockets with more flamethrowers if you want. So, and it has a chemical conflagration, so this thing can just melt anything that is in range. Love this ship as well. And again, only the uh, front of the ship right there is um, changeable. So only the front of the ship needs to be changed, and it's quite easy to magnetize. Like, I mean, I didn't do it myself, it's our painter, yes, miniature that did, but it seemed very easy to magnetize. So uh, it's always a good thing. Now, we're not going to go too much in detail about what we expect those ships to be. The DU seems to have a flamethrower in the front, which is fine, and some repair capabilities from what we see. Do We have the name, the D DU Emulation Cruiser. Okay, so we don't know exactly what that's going to be. But flamethrower is great. This is a Yaoji Artillery Cruiser with a little gun battery to the front, and these guns that come from first uh, in the Yangtze flagship. I hope it's not like two-thirds of the firepower of the Yangtze, otherwise it's going to be a little bit <laughs> oppressive, or then it, maybe it's going to be extremely expensive. I love the citadel of these Chinese ships, like right there, like, it looks great. The Mekong also seems to have a small flamethrower there. Maybe it's going to have landing vessel, uh, from what we can see from the front there, and that's already going to be good. Rear uh, gun battery, so probably an expensive-ish ship. Uh, the Yaoji, the artillery, also has a gun battery to the rear. That's going to be counterintuitive because then if you want to use both gun batteries, you need to be from the side. Uh, but then if you do this, you cannot uh, use uh, this artillery that's only going to shoot to the front. Though let's remember the Chinese ships can use their pivot, uh, like, um, like they have paddle wheels, so they are very much more mobile. So you can find the perfect firing position much more easily. Then we have the Wuhan, which seems to be exactly like this uh, repair ship. From what we can see, I think it's either a generator, either it's a, like I cannot understand it, what is this thing on the top. I think it's a generator. We'll have to see what it does. We can make some estimation, but let's not waste time on this. The Lantau also seems to be a support-oriented ship, but also a landing ship from the front, from what I can see. Maybe it's going to have logistical support, we'll have to see. Rear gun battery. To get some defenses. I'm not sure you're gonna want to make big squadrons, so just a single gun battery doesn't do much, usually maybe a point of damage if you're lucky. The Chang will probably be your bread and butter, because flamethrower, probably you're gonna be able to replace it, and couple uh, gun batteries is gonna be great, because then you can show your side, you're gonna have your broadside, your main gun, if it can shoot on the side, and two gun batteries. That's probably gonna be very good, but very expensive in points. You're gonna have some mess ones, the Hexi Hover Zebek. Um, have to see what it does. It's either, I see it either as a little artillery mortar, maybe a chemical mortar or something like this, or an anti-air gun. It's the two things that I can imagine. Uh, we'll have to see what it does exactly. And the first Japanese landing tokens. Uh, I'm quite happy that every faction is getting their own landing tokens, and I'm even happier to see that it's this very small version of the tanks that have already been teased for Armored Clash. So you really, like in Dystopian Wars, we will have the same miniatures as in uh, Armored Clash, just smaller because they're going to be tokens. But I think it's very, very cool. And when we're going to start to make a cross campaigns where you have battles in Dystopian Wars on the first day, for example, and we finish the landing in the Armored Clash the second day, for example, uh, it's going to be really cool to have the landing tokens with the miniatures painting the same color schemes as what you're going to play in the second day with just a bigger miniature. I love the concept. So that is it for the Ergun um, Battlefleet set. Again, a smaller uh, box is going to be quite cheaper, around 50 uh, euros, let's say. Um, maybe, maybe 45, maybe 52, we'll have to see exactly. Uh, do remember, though, that uh, if you order through Myobi Place, you're going to get minus 10% of your order, and it also supports the channel if you choose us in your cart. So thank you very much if you do that. 
The last thing, and we're going to skip fast on this, is the Union Aerial Squadron. If you need exactly precisely two more ships and that's all you need ever, okay, maybe take it. It's going to be a cheap way to obtain these ships. You have two of these Union Aerial uh, Cruisers, which are amazing. Like we've seen, uh, they were very bad when they were released. Forget what I said, they are now really good. They are not completely OP like the Imperium airships were at a, for a while, but they are really very much usable. Even the Bogotas there that I was not very happy about, they just received a new uh, update and now they're really also very usable alongside the Destiny especially. And some SRS tokens, so great, um, great box in general. Everything is usable, but then you're like, why do you tell us not to buy it? Because if you want this, it's a better deal to take either the Honorable Eclipse Company Battlefleet set or the amazing, amazing Destiny uh, Battlefleet set, which allows you to have not two sprues, like what you have here, but five sprues for the HEC and eight sprues for the Destiny, and then you can do whatever you want with this. Uh, it's a little bit, well, it is more, much more expensive, but the price per sprue and per stuff you get is cheaper, and you get basically the same thing, but more. So do consider, do I need only two of those, or do I want at least five? I think five is a sweet spot. Uh, because then I can really make a few things left and right. Or do I want to go all in and get the Destiny Battlefleet set? Uh, that is up to you. But regardless, do consider how many you want now and in the future, especially since there are so many variants of those ships and making a full aerial union ship is going to look great on the table and it's way, way usable. That is my only recommendation. Otherwise, the aerial squadron is still a good box. All right, that is going to be it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, again, please give us a thumbs up. It really helps. The comments give you a tip. Uh, if uh, Do share the channel to your friends because the contest will finish when we reach 1,500 subscribers. So the more you spread the channel and the more you ask your friends to subscribe, the faster we will have the uh, contest finished for who will win a Union or Covenant Battlefleet set. And the faster we will start a new contest with more stuff. I'm going to be surprised, of course. Uh, so yeah, do spread the good word. And until the next video, not only spread the good world, but remember to keep spreading the love all around. Bye.